Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishingNetwork.com, and today we're going to be talking about night crawler fishing. Now, before in previous videos, I talked and complained about how cold it was. Fish aren't biting. I can't find the fish. They've all gone deeper. They're they're obviously next to the bridge abutments, or they're down in the deep holes. I, I can't get to them. Then I told you I went to a website that's made by a group called Crab and MIT, and I found out that they actually uh, made a topographic map online that shows me where all these locations are. I know where all the holes are now, and I can actually reach some of them from shore where I normally go fishing at work. So I decided, forget the lures, I'm throwing on the real deal. And the real deal is a European night crawler. Now, why the European night crawler? Well, it, it's huge and it does well in cold temperatures because that's particularly where it's from. And it actually works better in that brackish water area that I'm in and when it's cold. So right now it's fall, but it feels like the you know, the dead of winter. It's so, like, you know, so cold here. I don't know where you are. Maybe you're in Florida. Awesome. Watch out for the red tide. Hopefully that's going going away and will stay away. Because I'm going out there soon and I want to go fishing too. Um, another great thing is they're, they're really, well, I told you they're really large, but they can get really large. But when you get them sometimes, they're a little small. But if you do your due diligence and feed them and take care of them, if you get a lot of them, they can get nice and plump again. Another great thing is they're wildly available. Wild, wildly available. And they're great worms. So, I got a treat for you. I got some right now, right here. And not from the base shop. I actually got them online. My first time doing this, so here we go. As you see here, there's this, uh, this plastic bin has the holes in it so they can breathe and there's some um, you know paper there to make sure the dirt doesn't come through but the air does but it says 120 because there's supposed to be 120 worms in here which is hmm I wonder about that but I open it up and whew, there's a ball of worms in there and not sure how you count that but it's close enough and for the price it's worth it obviously there's nothing on the outside now because they don't like the light they're night crawlers so as soon as they see light I took them out of the fridge boop they go straight to the middle so I have to find ones that are hiding like this one you see it there's a couple down there tell me this is too close but the fact of the matter is I got 120 night crawlers for 33 bucks shipped online. This came from Amazon, from a great company. And they also made a worm chow, because primarily people are doing this so they can uh, do some composting or like liven up their, their garden for the spring when they want to plant some or whatever, and they need the uh, soil to be arid and lots of nutrients from the uh, the worm casings that they create. Plus, they actually reproduce a lot, primarily, I believe, from cornmeal. But this apparently has some secret ingredients that they won't, don't want to tell anybody. And that's cool, as long as I can get it. Uh, actually, let's just look inside. While we're here, let's check this out. Hopefully, when I pull this piece of uh, wet paper up, which you should always keep them moist on top, and that keeps them nice and nice and healthy. Tomorrow morning, or hmm, maybe even, actually no, right when we're done, I'm gonna put some. They say a um. They say a little bit of this goes a long way, so I'm gonna sprinkle that on there, get it a little wet, probably about a quarter cup of water for this size container, put it in the fridge again, keep it nice and cool, but not freezing and see if they grow and reproduce but i've been thinking about doing something else which i'll talk about later so let's look inside here not working the way it was beforehand here we go yes look in there we got worms worms baby 
And, you know, for those who like to fish a lot with lures, great. I like to fish with lures, lures a lot too, but sometimes when the weather gets tough and the fish aren't around and they're, they're sluggish, everything slows down, you have to do what you have to do. Here at Fishing Network, we're here to catch fish. We're here to catch fish when we don't have time. So we're under time pressure, but I don't want it to feel like pressure. I want you to be out there and catching awesome fish all the time, whether it's the peak of summer and the birds are chirping, people are running, everybody's smiling and happy, and all the way down to that bitter cold winter, maybe you're gonna try out ice fishing, you're out there freezing your butt off, you can't feel your ligaments, but boom, catching crappie, bluegill, bass, pike, musky, whatever is at your local watering hole. So, the best bait is a worm for fresh water, and and salt water is a little different. Around here, it gets so cold, the waves freeze, freeze in action. You, you can actually go to the beach, and a wave will just freeze right at the curl. It's the craziest thing. I'm like, why did I move here? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe it's a little better fishing in Virginia, but there is an untapped resource of freshwater and saltwater fishing here, and it's known a lot for saltwater and striped bass and cod and haddock and all those things, but really, the freshwater fishery is very active, and most people don't take advantage of it, as you saw in all my videos, the Charles River fishing um, videos. You can go to YouTube, and there's a playlist called Charles River Fishing. You can see me actively fishing at the Charles River at work during my lunchtime and see how many people are fishing out there. Not many. So, Nightcrawler fishing bait is a great thing to do if you're in these situations. And there are a couple of ways you can rig them. So I want to show you that. I have a bunch of fishing, fishing stuff down here and let's just go through it. If you don't want to hear about it, just skip forward and go to the next session. The next section I'll be talking about where to buy night crawlers and one little secret I'll tell you at the end. So, whoops, grab the wrong one. Here are some snow hooks made by Eagle Claw. I think you know who they are. And these are what I use when I go for panfish the bluegills, the bream, the crappie, etc., etc. They're very small. They're size six. Sometimes I can even go down to a size four, and it's just great fishing. But if you're fishing with children, remember to tell them, hey, uh, when the bobber goes down or you feel the line pulling, please hook. Don't let them swallow the hook. I have a special tool over here. Hang on. A little sidetrack. <sighs> I just got it new after I ran into some complications fishing with my son. This is the old um, snailed hook remover. As you see here, the, the, you just slide the line down the hole and into this crack, and then when you get to the hook, the hook wraps around it, you twist, and then you pull it and you pop it out, and then pull it out. If you pop it out, it comes out of the fish's. Um, gut and then gets caught on the ridges so the barb gets caught on the ridges this is the small one etc etc and this is the big and this is the big one in case it's a big fish that's got it and the barb gets caught on the ridges and then you can pull it out safely without killing the fish hopefully some fish just die because they're in shock you know well i'm dying you got me out of the water too long i lost my my nice slime so if you're going to let the fish go do it quickly. Take your pictures. You know, try to support the weight of the fish. Don't like choke them at the gills. You know what you're doing. So back to this. Back to the, uh, the ways to rig a night crawler. Eel claw actually helps me out showing you because they have a nice little diagram here. On the on this side, you see there's a simple bobber, and there's a hook, and I believe there's a, sp a split shot here. There's actually a swivel. 
and the split shot is right there. If you're wondering what a split shot is, you don't know, you should know, but here it is. It's just a little uh, pincer. You can actually pull it apart here and then squeeze it with your hand right around the fishing line. And it gives you a little bit of weight because you don't need much weight for little bobbers. Bobbers like, like this. I'm not going to show you how to use it. You know, you know what you're doing. Hold it there. When you pull it on the side, it exposes it. And then boom, you have a bobber. Simple. The other way is using a, uh, it's called a slip rig. So you have, a, you have an egg sinker that slides up and down the line. And then you have a, usually a, a two-sided swivel. And then you have your snell hook just like this below it. Or you can have a three-way swivel and have several hooks of different types on the side. You can do a two-worm rig or a two-minnow rig or whatever you got connected to it. And that works fantastic. So look at this. You see the egg singer and the bobber. You see what's in between the swivels and maybe some sweat shot. And then you see the snailed hooks. Simple rigs. And for where I'm fishing, it's going to be a long cast. It's not that close. I'll be hitting the edge right where the drop is, and the drop is nice. Right now, it's not too cold. They'll be sitting there thinking about going to the shallows. I still see one or two of the smaller bait fish, and they're still hanging around near the shallows, but they, they have to go down to the deep parts when it gets too cold, and that's where the, the predators are waiting for them. So I'm going to be casting with some ridiculous size weights. I'm going to start off smaller with this... Uh, Man. Anyway, this is a two ounce weight. I'll start off with that, see how far I can go. I'll have my smaller rod here. I don't know if it can handle much more than that, but if it does get if it does get dirty down there, I have to switch to the four ounce. And then if I'm crazy and uh oh there's also different types. I can there's a pyramid sinker too, you know, it's great for like I believe sandy areas. And I'm alone one day and I got some time for myself. I might pull out the surf rod or my extra long medium heavy rod and pull out the six ounce and get really into that current and where I know the holes are and really test out these night crawlers. You guys have no idea what's going to happen. Oh, and I have the three way swivels. Didn't even realize it. So, you know, three way swivels. Sorry, I'm a little kerfuffled. I actually have some stuff for flounder, which are in the flats near me. I can actually fish some of those if I can, when I get my inflatable boat. Yes, I chose to go inflatable. Why? Uh, there's many reasons. Basically, the port of boat, it's hard to find. And two, they have a crack that appears near, on the transom. Where it bends, it's the most bendy part, which makes the whole thing work. You know, it's a foldable boat. And it leaks, you know, people are talking about it happening in four to five years. And it costs $3,000. And it's not like an easy patch. You know, you stick some uh, flex seal in there, that, that rubber stuff, or the spray stuff, or the, the caulking type of it. And, you know, it fixes it, but only if you don't fold it again. As soon as you fold it again, it's broken. And, obviously, I got a foldable boat. So I can use the portability of it, not just to put it on a hood, but to actually store it. I don't have like a spot to put a boat at yet. Not yet. My my parking spot fits my cars. That's it. And there's nowhere on the land to put it. That's what happens when you live close to the city. So it needs to go in a house. So I keep saying so. Inflatable desk works better. I can fold it up, I can put it in a bag, and put it in the house. And with the Eagle Claw Sport Runabout, which is C ready, and that's what they use, the 14 foot is what they use for the recovery of the fire department and the um, Coast Guard. It goes over 10 foot waves. It holds a lot of 2,000 pounds of people, you know, divers and stuff. And it's safe. 
as many chambers in there and I feel safer in that in the ocean than most other things so I'm gonna go there and it costs the exact same dollar amount and I can roll it up and put it in my house and I can fit an engine four times as big instead of a, a 10 horsepower max for the porter boat I can fit a 40 horsepower if I use the plastic floorboards so once I really looked at it I'm like why am I even thinking about this so totally off the subject of nightcrawler fishing uh, back to the snow hooks I had a couple more you know I'm not even sure why I'm showing this one but I got some more and I have some for saltwater. If there's any saltwater fishermen out there and you're looking for some flounder or some fluke, boom! You might have seen these super long Chester Town hooks. I actually never used them. I bought them. I was like, oh man, I'm going to do so much fishing in the, uh, in the ocean, right in the Boston Harbor. I can get out there if I get a boat and then getting a boat's not the easiest thing to do. But going to do it and this camera is going to capture it. I'm going to have all the videos, me getting bounced around, me learning things, me, you know, on my journey to go fishing at work and going fishing more often and going fishing with my family. You know, things all us fishermen want to do. And basically for, for flounder and fluke, you're gonna go with sea worms. It's a crazy looking thing. It looks like a blood worm, but it has like a small, how do I describe it? Like a, a bunch of little rubber thingies, but it's actually like feet, but not feet, coming out both sides of it. And it makes it look like a crazy um, millipede looking thing. Plus, the thing bites you if you, uh, you mess around. So watch out where it mouth where its mouth goes it's even worse than the blood worm it will actually bite you and it will hurt so when you grab it you put it on the hook don't waste any time and one of the hooks you can use for that is this fluke a rig here this has the uh the tri swivel it has the um the hook the um lever thing built in here so you can just slap on a, a nice big six ounce weight if you're really not current or um or a pyramid weight if you're in a sandy bottom, which is where the flounder and fluke are. So you're probably going to want to get a bigger version of this. This is a two ounce. If you're in the ocean, you're going to want four or more. I err on, on the side of caution. Just go big. And if you want to use something else other than worms, hmm, there's clams and squid. Wait for that too. But back to the show where to buy night crawlers you can get them at the local base shop hopefully got one near you I have one that's within five miles it has great hours um, the person that works there owns it and he's a uh, he's very welcome to help you do anything you need to do and how to do it and where to catch the fish so if you have a local base shop near you please support them uh, get stuff when you can and if you can't get it you know there's other places to get it you can go to the a sports store like Dick's Sporting Goods there's even like Walmart or some places that used to sell fishing bait like that the retail stores have stopped because well they weren't selling that much and the bait was dying so they kind of pulled it back you might even find some convenience stores in certain uh, areas of the country that will sell fishing bait because nobody else is and all the people are going into a convenience store and saying, oh, you got any bait? They're like, no. You got any bait? No. You got any bait? No. They're like, hey, maybe we should get some fishing bait and put it in one of the freezers. I think we can make some good return on investment there, some good margins. They get some worms. They get some cut bait. They freeze it. They put it in there. They're like, oh, man, you got worms. I'll buy all of them. And, then, well, you know, great for them. Awesome. And, or you can be like, me and try out buying your worms online here they are they came in a box came in two days they were properly packaged they were put in some nice uh it was a usps priority box with some papers and some uh, styrofoam in it and 
They have it nice and moist. They have it arid. They're not, you know, this is a real company, not messing around. They have everything labeled. This is the amount of worms that are in this container. They can breathe. They have a nice moist uh, environment with the paper and the soil, and they probably have a little bit of food in there so that they don't show up hungry. It says in the paperwork that they haven't, they haven't eaten in four to six days, so you want to get them into their new environment, which I don't have a new environment for them because I'm not composting yet. You can also get worms in your backyard. You can dig them up. If you have a garden, they're probably in there because you've thrown all the poop and all the old uh, plants that have died have fallen back to the earth and rejuvenated. Uh, Just like when the leaves fall off the trees, they provide nutrients that they use from the tree and they give it right back to the same soil that that tree is going to grow from. So the cycle of life. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, which I did not divulge to you earlier, is raising fishing worms. What? You just told me to go to the local bait shop. Well, if you're going to be fishing a lot with worms, like this guy, maybe you want to think about raising them. Raising this, uh, you know, a couple hundred. It's a small time thing, you know, in your house, especially when it's winter out here in the Northeast. Everything is hunkered down or somewhere warm. And I saw some very nice options online. So these, there's these stacked trays where you have your food on like tray one and tray two on top. Then you have like some uh, some worms and some dirt grit stuff. They need actual pebbles and like microscopic things to break down the food. And they also need the microbes and stuff that come out of the rotting food that falls down into that tray and then they eat it that way. And there's another layer under them which catches stuff, but this is me running off memory. I, I will talk about all that in a different uh, a different video where, where I actually have the tray and I've done it and I've started it and I can show you all the worms in there nice and happy doing their thing and all of my compost being composted in Maybe I'll have some compost for my spring gardening because I do do some gardening, you know, basic stuff. Just making some lettuce. Wait, wait did I make lettuce this year? Uh, carrots, uh, tomatoes, you know, basic things you can get in the store. They're babies. You just put them in the soil, watch them grow, eat the produce. And you can also raise them in your actual garden too. I'm not sure how it works out if you want to use the worms later because you have to dig them out and then you might dig them, you might actually hurt them, and then you might not get all the ones you want. It's just harder, it's just easier to have the compost bin, the trays. You can pull out the tray that has all the worms, get the worms you need for that day or that trip that you're making, and then put the rest back and they're happy. They'll continue their life. They'll continue eating. They'll continue reproducing. Boom. Free worms. So that's pretty much all I have to say about nightcrawler fishing and, you know, nightcrawler fishing bait and where to buy them, where to buy the, where to buy the worms, uh, and raising fishing worms if you want to do that. So if all this sounds cool, go out and do it. Try it out. Grab some worms like I am. Next week, come Monday at my work, I'm going to pull these puppies out and I'm going to try that spot. I'll make a video about it. You'll see me acting foolish, getting the worms on there, and thinking or seeing if that hole that's supposed to be out there is real. And if I catch something, I'm going to be a happy dude. A very, very happy dude and I'll be doing a lot more and I'll definitely be investing and in raising some fishing worms with the, with the, uh, the European night crawlers, some red wigglers, pretty much anything that I can get a bite from at on the Charles River. So now that you're here, go down below, click that like button, subscribe, write a comment if you think this is cool or you have some questions or you're wondering what I'm going to do or what you can do with fishing worms like the European Nightcrawler and just want to learn more about how to fish at work if you're interested in that. 
most people are interested in fishing more than they currently are. Not sure what way to define them. Like, hey, would you like to fish more often? No? Really? Who says that? Mm -mm. I don't think so. So if you are interested, go to fishingatwork.com and get the 10-step process to go fishing at work PDF. It's free. You just give me your email. You go on the list. I'll provide you with more great content like this video and maybe some more detailed stuff about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and how you can do it. So I'll see you Monday with my worms, but you'll probably see me tomorrow and the day after that on some other topic. So see ya when I see ya and make sure you try to go fishing this weekend. Like I'm going to try to go fishing. I shouldn't use the word try. I am going to go fishing and you're going to see me. I'll see you there.